My name's Brandon and this is Video Game History, a show where I take a look back on a certain franchise of video games and retrospectively review them. This week we're checking out the debut video game based on the codename Kids Next Door franchise. The show, which I reviewed season 1 of, is based around 5 kid operatives who make it their mission to prevent adult crimes against children. When you word it like that, it actually sounds kinda serious, but in reality, they just fight against homework and the dentist and stuff like that. This premise, however, is ripe for a video game, which is why Vicarious Visions developed Operation Soda for the Game Boy Advance. Well, at least I think it was by Vicarious Visions. The startup screen says they worked on the game, but online I've only found evidence saying High Voltage Software worked on it. The only place mentioning it was developed by Vicarious Visions is on game rankings. I did find that the PS2 and GameCube codenamed Kids Next Door game was developed by High Voltage Software, so I think what's happened here is people have just slapped them on the Wikipedia page as a developer of the Game Boy Advance games when it's actually Vicarious Visions, so kids, this is why people get told to not take everything on Wikipedia so seriously. Anyway, Vicarious Visions is best known for the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy recently, which received a lot of critical praise and sold pretty well but they also worked on the Powerpuff Girls Him and Seek. The game was released on November 2, 2004, and judging how well it performed critically is impossible considering only two reviews exist. Nintendo Power's 2.7 out of 5 is really the only thing to go on. The codename Kids Next Door franchise is ready-made for video games though, so I'm expecting something that's at least half decent. Codename Kids Next Door Operation Soda is a side-scrolling shooter. You'll get to play as all five kids throughout different levels, with each one being set up in the exact same way an episode of the show would be set up. The story of the game is that the adults have passed a Soda Control Act, which has raised the legal drinking age of Soda to 13. The Kids Next Door have not taken kindly to this new law and have started running a secret soda smuggling operation to provide kids with their favourite beverages. It's all very similar to Homer becoming the Beer Baron in the episode Homer vs the 18th Amendment. You're out there somewhere, Beer Baron? And I'll find you. No, you won't. Yes, I will. Won't. Levels are either aerial or land-based, with number one and two having all their levels based in the air. This breaks up gameplay a bit, and at least makes the five different characters seem a little unique rather than just being clones. Similarly, there are slight differences in how each character controls, as well as the type of weapons they use. For example, number two is much slower than number one through the air. Number 1 has a typical ray gun for a weapon, while number 5 has darts that put enemies to sleep temporarily, and number 4 uses melee attacks. Each character is different in at least one or two ways, which I enjoyed much more than the Powerpuff Girls games making all three girls identical. You'll also be upgrading weapons in every level, and these upgrades may make you more powerful or add a unique new ability like number 3 super jump she acquires. Besides blasting your way to the end of stages without dying, you're also tasked with collecting bottle caps. Every time you collect 50 of these, you're rewarded with an extra life. The problem with this is it's almost impossible to miss a bottle cap, so it becomes a bit much receiving an extra life so often for doing something that takes such little effort. I went about 3 quarters through the game and had yet to miss even one bottle cap before I decided to just plough through the levels because I had absolutely no use for caps anymore. I think if they wanted to use a system like this, it would have been much better to have included secret areas making you go off the beaten path and actually think to obtain all the caps and get the extra life. Arguably the biggest problem with Operation Soda is that it's ridiculously easy. Deaths are few and far between, and when they do come it's usually a result of you stuffing up a jump and falling into a bottomless pit. None of those deaths are actually at the hand of the game providing a challenge though, because generally it's caused by your finger slipping or you pressing the wrong button. It's pointless to even entertain the idea of dying due to combat, as you'll be steamrolling anything in front of you, and on those occasions where your health does get chipped away, there's almost always a health pickup ahead. The laughable difficulty combines with the overkill of extra lives to make this game something even very young children wouldn't struggle with. I had about 40 lives stored up before I stopped caring to collect caps. If I had kept playing as I was, I wouldn't have been surprised to see me finish the game with 60+. plus. Not only is the game easy, but it's very short too. There are just 15 levels and one final boss battle to get through. 15 seems like a decent number, but quite a lot of those levels can be beaten in 5 minutes or even less. I found it frustrating that they didn't include more boss battles. Codename Kids Next Door is full of funny and interesting villains, so including a few more of these would have not only added to the content of the game, but it also would have given some more variety to the gameplay. All up, the game could be beaten in around 2 hours. 
Despite it being a short-lived experience, the game still manages to become boring and tedious. It gets boring because there's absolutely no challenge and you're doing the same things repeatedly, while the tedious aspects come from some really annoying sections in the final few levels. The most obvious example of this is having to push boxes around in one of number 5's levels. Pushing these boxes is so slow and there are so many in the level that it just starts to get on your nerves. Moments like these have you begging for the game to end, even though you really haven't spent all that long with it. Quite frankly, this game is completely uninspiring. It really feels like a half-hearted effort at a kids next door game. To top off all the problems, the final boss battle is terrible. It boils down to just mashing the attack button and then jumping a few times before you finally win. Was this really the best they could come up with? I would expect so much more from a boss battle featuring the kids next door, and at the very least I would think I would see all 5 kids combining their unique abilities to take their enemy down. To be fair though, a shitty boss battle is a very fitting way for this game to end. Now back to Cartoon Network's NBA All-Star Slam. As you can clearly see, LeBron James, we are an unstoppable defensive tower of power. Go ahead and drive to the hole. We dare ya! My lower half is numb. Now, Mr. NBA Superstar, do your worst. Whoa. Wait! The tower of power wasn't ready yet. Le LeBron, where are you going? <laughs> do over! Get Codename Kids Next Door Operation Soda is not a good game. It's in the same vein as a lot of the recent Cartoon Network games I have reviewed, where they aren't broken or filled with glitches anymore, but they're just so uninspired and lacking in substance. The Kids Next Door franchise is capable of something far more interesting than what's on offer here, so it's frustrating to see what Vicarious Visions served up. The good news is that almost one year after this game was released, Operation Video Game was released on home consoles, and it will be the next game I review, so there's still hope that I'll get to play a decent Kids Next Door game. 